It's a Chinese spacewalk. A bubble rises in the pool. It's complete fraud. Here the helmet gets hit on the International Space Station and a bubble rises <laughs> into the pool. Tossing some bullshit and a bubble appears at 3.39 in this video. And it takes an odd trajectory because it's in a water pool. Houston, we have a problem. Space is broken. Sorry, U.S. government. Uh, I have to show them the bubble. There's the bubble in the pool that we just saw. Yep, doesn't even go in a straight line. It's in a water pool. Takes a very odd trajectory. Because the water is actually moving around. It's not still. And uh, here on the International Space Station, they once even got caught with a scuba tank in space. Which is the faking of spacewalks in a swimming pool. In this vid, you catch a glimpse of someone wearing a scuba tank. Scuba tanks in space? NASA does literally nothing in space. It's all bullshit. The video is sped up. So it looks more natural. But yeah, they're underwater. And the video is sped up. And they do this on the Hubble Space Telescope as well. So that's how you know the Hubble Space Telescope never existed in orbit. This is all bullshit. I need somebody to sing the Little Mermaid song, Under the Sea. <laughs> they're in a water tank. It's from a distance, can you tell? What's with all this atmospheric bullshit? What kind of camera is this? Do they make it look like they're underwater on purpose? They have two water tanks. They have the water tank that they train in, and then they have this water tank for the fraud. They never work in space. The International Space Station is complete bullshit. What's even more ridiculous about them filming spacewalks in a water pool, and spacewalks are impossible, is that the women for the hoax perm their hair. Here she's in front of a blue screen, and the background is not moving, the cable is completely still, and in real life there would be airflow in the space station, the space station would be making adjustments that would not stay fixated. It's just a screenshot, and they just put it in the background. It's blue screen, and her hair is permed for this ridiculous hoax. This is a video that I made about the absurdity with their hairdos. They perm their hair. It's ridiculous. Their hair stays fixated. The public doesn't notice that their hair is permed. And yeah, the women are completely ridiculous on the space station. One thing that gives away the International Space Station hoax is the women. They claim they can't shower and they take sponge baths. In real life, women would shave their heads. They would not go with hair like this if they could not shower. They just would simply would not do this. Now, women on zero-g planes with long hair, their hair flows naturally in the air. And the women on the International Space Station, because this is all fraud, their hair is fixated the entire time. Why do they even have long hair to begin with? This woman's hair stays fixated in this position the entire time in her really long International Space Station video. No matter what she does, no matter how she bounces around, you would expect her hair to flow in the air and it does not happen. It stays completely fixated like that. Now the zero G plane that they work in can be grounded for these pictures. She does not have to actually be working out and you wouldn't be able to tell because she has her permed fixated hair. It looks like she's still in space. When they are doing this fraud on the planes, you can hear the sounds of jet engines. They cannot filter out the sounds of jet engines with the specialized microphones that they use. You can notice it in the background. It's very loud. Here's I Justine. She has a vlog. Her hair flows in the air as it would because the hair is moving through air. So it's going to flow as you bounce around. And on the International Space Station, this does not happen with the women. They do flips. They lay down. They do all kinds of things 
they bounce from here to there. They pretend they're Superman. Their hair will never look like that because it's permed. This woman's hair stays fixated. I'm going to put a filter on this thing. She's going to sound like a chipmunk. It's going to be sped up. You're going to hear the sound of jet engines. You're going to see transitional periods where the plane has to gain its altitude again and drop all over again. So they do a transition like that one. And you think, oh, it's just editing. They're just shortening the video. No, this is for the fraud. Now she's in the zero-G environment again. So they can continue. I'm Sunny Williams. I'm up here on the International Space Station. Now, I want to say where we are. So right now, we're in the Japanese laboratory, and I was flying through space like this. My left hand would be where the Japanese laboratory... So I'm inside. It's sort of like a little phone booth, um, but it's pretty comfy. I've got a sleeping bag. <laughs> and I sleep upside down. I can't have it. I don't have any sensation in my head that tells me that I'm. And then our ready time duck can go outside. As we call it, we go do a spacewalk in case we have to do anything outside. Some of the things we do outside are just like inside repairs. We have a lot of um, electric. have a lot of. Um, we have a lot of um, electrical boxes and machinery and solar arrays and here we are at the throne this is awesome you might see the little um you might have noticed the little moon on the outs it serves for two functions number two right here i'll show you but you see it's pretty small so you have to have pretty good aim and you'll be, be ready to Make sure things get let go the right direction. And it smells a little bit, so I'm closing it up. And that's, of course, for number two. And this guy right here is for number one. So they're sort of two slightly separate functions, but you can do a little, essentially both, by hanging on right here and doing number one and number two. I might add it's color coded so you really don't get it mixed up, which is nice. This is yellows for number one. <laughs> the uh, space station. Uh, it's one of those places you find yourself hanging out in all the time because all you want to do is look back at our planet. I think some questions I had were about what do you do in your free time? In the heart of the space station, really, this is the service mall, module. This is the central post. In case we had any problems, I know one, a couple of the questions were about what type of things do you have to worry about? And some of the things we have to worry about in space are fire, if we had a fire, if we had a depressurization, like we were hit by a micrometeorite and it made a hole. So we gather here as a group of three or six and then figure out how we're going to either fight the fire, patch the hole, or solve the, uh, the toxic spill. And what's cool about this module, of course, it's the central post. It also has uh, great windows right down toward Earth. It has uh, controls to fly in uh, visiting space. No problem. At the Probka. For our ride home, it's a little bit squishy, but everybody asks, how do you sit in the Soyuz? And you sort of sit in your seat like this. Everybody has a handmade seat for them, sorts of survival gear uh, with us, keeping us safe in here. So they've pretty much thought of everything. 
and uh, we'll be home on the planet within the next 12 hours. Pretty shocking. <laughs> Here's another scene with Catherine Katie Coleman. Seems to be done in the suspended mode. Have a look at her hair. There's something odd about her hair. I know this is zero gravity and hair is supposed to stick out and go all over the place, but her hair doesn't really flop around naturally. It's always sticking out kind of rigidly. Maybe they permed it in that position, or perhaps they're hanging her upside down. As she shakes her head from side to side slightly, you can see the hair always springs back to a particular position with respect to her head. It should flop all over the place. Professor Lawrence Cr